Hey everyone, uh, it's been a while since I did a video, but um, since we're talking about the uh, introduction to Bash scripting today, um, and we have a lot to cover, I thought it might be useful um, to basically go through this demo um, as a video, so you can go back and you know, um, you know, remind yourself of parts that may be kind of difficult or you didn't get it the first time around. Okay. So uh, we're going to talk about Bash scripting today. Um, this is basically um, some of the stuff that makes um, Linux so appealing for a lot of people. Um, so Bash, we've been using Bash to sort of talk about our um, basic, our environment over here and the commands that we've been using. Uh, but Bash is also a programming language. It is an interpreted language, which means that there's no compiler. Um, you don't make anything. It's not like C. Um, and when you are running a bash script, uh, the interpreter is going to be running through each line and interpreting it and trying to figure out what it thinks that you want to be doing. Um, so sometimes that creates a little bit of um, uh, ambiguity. Ambiguity is usually bad, uh, but uh, bash is also a great tool. And uh, as you can see, we have already like all these utilities that exist out there. Um, so it can be uh, one of the best solutions to a certain number of problems. Okay, so just to get started, um, I'm going to start off with a command that you've seen before. And we always start with hello world. I feel like it's a, a law at this point. I'm going to use echo and we know what echo does. It echoes whatever is there, right? Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to the beginning. I'm going to put these in quotes. Um, kind of doesn't matter which quotes you're using in the, at this point, uh, but I'm just going to use these square quotes because that way we can see where, you know, things match up, basically. Um, I'm going to throw this into a file called test. So this is a redirection. You've seen this before. And there it is, test. We can take a look inside test. We see exactly what we have before, right? Um, so this is a command. Echo is a command that uh, echoes stuff. Um, and we haven't really seen the utility of it yet until this point. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, actually, um, is make this executable. Because basically what we are doing now, what we're trying to do, is create our first script, our first thing that we can execute. Um, so let's give that a shot. Let's just type in test. And nothing happens, so that's weird. Um, and the reason that this doesn't work is um, we don't have this in path. So what is path? Well, let's take a look at what path is. So we have these variables that exist in Bash. And um, they all have different values. I didn't set anything. This is the interpreter that set it. Um, one of these is called path. And what you'll see here is uh, several different directories, user local sbin, user local bin, user sbin, user bin, blah, blah, blah. These are all paths where we're going to accept um, uh, executables, basically. So if you remember slash bin, is one place where we find things like ls, rm, cp. All these utilities that we've been using so far, they all live in bin, okay? The place that we are now, if we take a look, is not in path. So we're not allowed to run this basically. Um, we're not allowed to run this. Um, by default and probably there's something else that's called test which is why it's not throwing up an error um, but there's a way around this and so you've seen this before and I've been discouraging it up until now right to make a script run in our current location we need to specify the current location so what is current location well it's dot right and then the next thing that comes after that is slash. And then the next is the name of our script that we've created. Okay? So it's very, very common to be executing things using this um, basic 
current path slash you know name of script. And when we do this, we finally get our hello world message to come up. So a couple takeaways from that. Um, when you're using dot slash, you're usually using it to execute things. Um, the second thing is that this uh, command that we have called echo, it allows us to print. So if you're coming from C world, <laughs> the world of C programming language, uh, not the ocean, um, this is kind of like printf, you know, kind of. We actually can use printf in our bash scripts as well, but you know, echo is a little bit easier. Okay, so you notice um, basically our very, very, very small script, um, one line, uh, works out of the box, which is pretty cool. All we had to do is make it executable, and we kind of had to do this uh, workaround of, uh, well, it's not in path, so we could either change path, or we could move it into a place where it's allowed to run, or we can just use the dot slash to make it work wherever. Um, so that's all great, but I want to talk about some conventions that we have when we're working with uh, scripts. Now, one thing is, uh, this is working for me here, uh, but this script is not necessarily portable. The reason being, um, people's location of bash might be in different places. Um, we might not know how we're supposed to execute this thing. Um, if I was writing in Python, uh, for example, the computer wouldn't maybe know what you know language I'm trying to run it as. Anyway, um, it's kind of a it's kind of a big topic, uh, but we have one way to get around this. You'll notice also I don't have any uh, file extension here. Um, so Linux, as I said, doesn't really care about uh, file extensions. It sees .txt and it doesn't really care what that's supposed to be doing. Um, so we have a couple things that we usually do with these sort of um, with these files. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change test into test.sh, and the sh is there to uh, specify to human readers, to us, that this is a bash script. Okay. Um, I've also seen people use dot bash like this, um, but I think most common is dot sh. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now I have test.sh. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter a shebang in here. So that's a weird word. Let's talk about that. Um, basically, a shebang is um, a line at the very top of a script that is going to specify how we want to execute this script. Okay, um, let me go in before I do that. And I'm just going to show you where my bash is existing. So when I run which bash, you can see that my bash is in slash bin. It doesn't have to necessarily be there. In different systems, it might be elsewhere. OK. Uh, similarly, if it was going to do something like uh, uh, Perl, I'm not sure if I've got Perl. I do have Perl. My Perl is in a, in a completely different location. Um, if I was going to use Python, um, it's also going to be in a different location. Now it's in user bin rather than slash bin, right? Um, so it's good practice to be specifying these things. So let me go back here. Where is my bash living? It's in slash bin bash. So let me specify that inside my script so that nothing breaks. Now the way that we do that is we start with a hash and the hash is a comment, or it's the way that we start a comment in bash, and then followed by an exclamation mark, and then the path where we want to be running this, basically. Okay, so that's our shebang. It is very, very, very good practice to be putting a shebang at the top of all of your scripts. So in fact, um, you know, as you go on later on, I don't know, if you're doing more bash scripting later on in your in your uh, in your program, uh, you'll probably get marks off if you're not putting a shebang in there. And it's always good to comment your code, even though we know that you kind of don't always. Uh, this is a test script. Okay. Okay, and let me just make sure that test.sh, yeah, it's still executable. Okay, so so far so good. Okay, 
So now we can start talking a little bit about variables. Every programming language that we've used has variables. Um, you'll notice that I printed off uh, one environment variable when I was showing you path. Um, if you ever want to take a look at some of the environment variables that you have set uh, by default, you can type in env. This is short for environment. And what you get back is a whole lot of, you know, useful uh, environment variables that you can actually use for things. Um, so for example, display, language, um, users in here, my current working directory is here. Um, so yeah, you can definitely, you know, make use of these, um, but that's a little advanced for this course. Um, so what I'm going to do, let's go back into test.sh over here, and let's start to work with some of these variables, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is type in name. Name is my first variable that I'm creating. Um, it could be anything you like. I'm just going to use this because it's nice and descriptive. And I'm going to assign it a value of Eric. Okay. Please notice no spaces around the equal sign. Bash is one of the languages where stuff like that really, really counts. And I'm going to use dollar sign name over here. So this is one of the first things that you'll notice that is different from other languages you might be familiar with. Um, when we are assigning a value to a variable, no dollar sign. When we are printing out the value of that variable, when we're outputting its value, we do use a dollar sign. Okay, so I'm just going to save this. Uh, let's clear the screen and let's go ahead and just, oh, sorry. Let's uh, actually just run this. Let's go test.sh. And there we go, it's printing out my name, which is nice. Now, um, it's time for me to show you one of the sort of um, troublesome aspects of this. So let's go over here and let's change this into Eric Brower. Let's use my full name. Um, so I'm gonna hit X over here, go back over here. And it spits out this error message saying line five Brower command not found. So remember how I said that Bash is actually a um, interpreted language? Basically, the interpreter got to line five. It takes a look at what's there. It correctly interprets uh, that Eric is something that we're assigning to our uh, variable, but then it looks, it sees the space and it basically stops interpreting that as you know something we want to assign to a variable. It sees the next thing, and I guess what it thinks is that this is a command. And it says, hey, we don't have a command called Brower, so let's just fail. So how do we get around this? Um, hopefully you guys have a pretty good idea. Uh, what I can do is double quotes, of course. Um, so the double quotes are going to keep the interpreter um, from seeing that space as a command or something new that we want to do, right? So let's go over here. Of course, that works again. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, is um, quotes have different meanings. So let's say I change these double quotes down here to single quotes, okay? Now we run this, and you'll notice that that is no longer my variable value, right? This is not the value of name. This is just dollar sign name. So what does that mean? Well, basically, when you're using single quotes, um, when you're using single quotes, you stop the interpreter from doing any substitution inside those quotes, okay? So normally what happens is if we're using double quotes, for example, the interpreter goes inside that line. If it sees the dollar sign followed by a variable name and it knows that the variable name has already been set, it interprets that as us wanting to spit out the value of whatever's there. And it will do that. It will perform a substitution. It'll take dollar sign name and substitute Eric Brower. Now, when we use single quotes, we are telling the interpreter do not do any substitution at all. 
we want literally you to print dollar sign name and so no substitution happens so that's something to keep in mind it's uh, stuff that will be on the exam and also something that can you know really cause you some issues when you're actually doing this in the real world so let me go back and I'm just going to change these back to um, single double quotes I'm sorry and let's save that and just make sure that yeah everything is still working the way we want it to okay so we've been doing a lot of outputting we've talked about variables it's time to talk about inputs um, so the way that we do inputs is with a command called read and uh, it's pretty simple so I'm gonna use echo again and I'm gonna ask the user to enter their name and the dash n here is um, all that's doing is basically stopping us from moving to a new line okay so the next thing I'm gonna add over here is just read name and we can save that and we can go over here so you'll notice again the cursor is on that same line it did not move to a new line and we can just enter our name over here and it works okay so let's talk about something that's maybe a little bit more specific to bash stuff so you've been noticing in this course all these commands that we've been using like for example um, like cat right uh, when we're using cat cat is our program and it takes arguments um, so I can say cat.sh so cat being the program test.sh being the argument and what it does is takes whatever the argument is if it's a file it's going to print out whatever it finds inside if we tried to do it with something that doesn't exist uh, we'll get a message back saying like we can't do that right um, so we have that capability as well when we're creating our bash scripts and it's actually really really easy to do so what I'm going to do is go inside here I'm gonna take this out because let's face it it's kind of annoying when you're you know being asked to, to you know when you're prompting the user to do stuff it's usually nicer just to like have it work automatically I'm gonna take out the variable name name here and what I'm going to replace it with is just dollar sign one okay I'm gonna save that now let me just clear it off so I'm going to do test.sh and I'm going to feed it Eric and hey it works um, so that is the first argument and we can literally go up and use lots we can do up to dollar sign nine so let's do dollar sign two and dollar sign threes for example something like this and we can you know just type in names and then we're saying hi to everybody I don't know let's do this um, so yeah like I say this goes up to dollar sign nine and you can go beyond that um, but that's usually not recommended because you know I'm sure you know typing in commands with more than 10 different arguments is going to be really uh, it's gonna be more trouble than it's worth right so let's go back in here so these are basically built in and you can use them um, and there's very little setup involved uh, you don't really have to do much of anything to make it work which is nice and um, there's some more that we're gonna talk about uh, but let me just show you one of them right now so I'm gonna echo number of arguments and so the one I'm gonna use for this is again dollar sign you'll notice all of our variables are starting with dollar sign right and I'm gonna add a hash here and let me just actually just do something like that right so what this is going to do what this variable contains is the number of arguments being passed into our script okay so I can save this and I can do this I'll just take out Paul for now um, it works and it's correctly counting the number of arguments if I get rid of Melissa here it's take keeping track of the number of arguments coming in um, of course now our output is all wrecked but you know that's when we get into sort of error checking and different conditionals which is something we're gonna cover very soon okay 
So as you can see, we have arguments coming in. We can count the number of arguments. And uh, I think the next step is we should talk about conditionals and ways that we can sort of uh, change the behavior of our script based on a variable that is coming in. So um, you'll notice when we have two names, it works just fine. If we have one name, it doesn't work. It just uh, the um, the uh, output is is botched basically. So let's fix this a little bit. Um, maybe what we want to do is start off with the conditional. And basically, what we want to say, you know, if number of arguments equals zero, then we want to say something like, uh, you know, echo, please enter your name. Okay. And um, that's a, probably a good place to start. So this being pseudocode, this is not the way it's going to work. Um, so we get to talk about the uh, interesting syntax of bash for doing these sorts of things. So our condition that we're going to be using is going to be surrounded by square brackets. Okay. Then we follow that with then. The number of these, uh, the indents doesn't matter, but I usually just use four. And we end our if statement with fi, which is just if backwards, okay? So now let's go in here. So we know the, the variable that we're testing. The variable that we're testing is dollar sign hash, right? This contains the number of arguments. And let's just say if the number of arguments equals zero, then we're going to ask the user to enter their name, okay? So let's just give that a shot and see what it looks like. So this is with Eric and Alyssa. So that's working just fine. Let's take out all of the arguments. And we get this, which is mostly getting there, but uh, not quite. So we can use this to start talking about exit codes. So hopefully you've been uh, working in C programming for a while now, um, and you have been working with functions. You've been passing arguments into functions, and you've been getting uh, return values out of functions. Um, this is very, very similar. And um, it's something that has been working in the background the whole time, and we get to talk about it now, basically. Um, all of the utilities that we are using uh, will return exit codes. So let's do something like, uh, we'll do cat.sh again. Okay, so this is giving us some standard output, and we're reading the standard output, and it's all very good for us. Um, but we also get an exit code out of that. And the way that we can see that is with um, this dollar sign question mark. Okay? So a good way to think about it is dollar sign question mark is sort of um, prompting the program that ran just before, uh, how did you do? What happened? Success or failure? You'll notice that the exit code it brings back over here is zero. Okay? Zero is good. Zero usually means no significant problems, everything went fine. Okay? Let's try to cat something that doesn't exist. Let's try to cat one, two, three, four. And we get a message back. Uh, this message is in our standard error. And let's take a look at what we get back from here. So we encountered a problem, and the exit code that it gave us is one. Okay? It doesn't have to be one, it could be anything that isn't zero, basically. Um, so that indicates to us that we've had a problem, that we tried to do something, and um, we, encountered, uh, we encountered a result that was maybe not expected. Okay? Um, different exit codes can have different meanings. If you go into man pages, sometimes they help to explain like what different exit, exit codes might mean. 
Uh, for example, if you're trying to run a zip and uh, there's a corruption or something like that, it might turn back, it might return like 127 as, a, as an exit code. Um, but let's implement this. Let's go into our code over here. And what we want to do here is if the user is reaching this condition, um, something has gone wrong and we want to make them aware of it. Okay. And also we want to quit. We don't want the script to proceed after this point. So what we can do here is just uh, enter exit one. Okay. And maybe just to be, uh, you know, just to, to cover our bases, um, if we get to the end of our script here, we'll um, not echo, sorry. We will return back zero. Okay. So now we have one sort of like, one error message and one exit exit condition and another exit condition when everything goes according to plan. Let's try that. Please enter your name. And notice as soon as we hit the exit, um, nothing else occurs. Okay, so we're basically like returning from our program. And we can take a look at the exit code over here and it's a it's a one so we've begun to sort of like um, implement the best practices for bash scripts at this point okay so I've edited the um, script a little bit since uh, we last talked and you can take a look at what's going on here basically um, very simple and there's different ways that you can decide to do stuff like this. Um, but this is just one approach and it'll work for now. Um, so once again, we're checking if the number of arguments equals zero. If it does equal zero, then we're going to ask the user to try to run the script again, but this time with an argument. Okay. The next thing that we can do here is um, if the number of arguments equals one, then we'll just say hello once. Otherwise, we'll say hello to the first two arguments. And then we'll just, you know, print off the number of arguments now just for just for reference. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Okay, there we go. Mm, okay. So, sorry about that. So, here's test.sh. Okay, this exits, nothing happens. Let's try with one user. Oh, and oh, hey, look, we have a, an, a mistake. What happened here? Oh, yeah, okay, sorry about that. Let me get rid of this. I'll keep it in there just so you can see mistakes happening. All right, and we'll do, and there we go. And obviously, you know, you can see the, the, um, the problem with this script is as soon as we add somebody else, we're ignoring Sam, and Sam gets sad. Uh, but we're going to sort of handle this case um, in the future, in the next lecture, when we start to talk about uh, loops and stuff like that. So before we start talking about loops, there's one other thing that I want to show. Um, and the reason I'm showing it to you now is because uh, typically students have sort of struggled with this for whatever reason. Um, but uh, so I figure like, you know, more times I can show this to you. Uh, before quizzes and stuff, the better, right? So um, we had uh, some input coming in from the user, right? Um, let's say that we want to make sure that the user is not trying to do anything weird or malicious, and we want to be checking the stuff coming in. Um, or we just want to make sure that maybe like, um, you know, the, the input that they're getting is not going to cause any weird issues. Um, so we have all the core utilities that we've been talking about, uh, including grep. Grep is going to be something that's very useful for us in this case. Um, let's say that we want to make sure that whatever the user enters is going to be a name. So that means it can be uppercase letters or lowercase letters, but nothing else. No special characters, no special symbols, no numbers. Okay. So something like, you know, echo Eric. Okay, so let's take this. Let's pipe this into grep. Okay, and what we're going to do is use a regular expression to evaluate 
what is coming in from the user. Okay, We're going to start with the beginning of the line and the end of the line. So this is going to, this is going to be looking at the entire input from the user. Okay, And the characters that we want to allow, we're going to put in these square brackets. We want users to be able to use uppercase and lowercase letters and nothing else. Okay, So this is going to match only the first character. To make it more, we're going to use this. Okay, So basically this is going to be matching up with you know zero to many uppercase and lowercase letters. And it's also going to stop people from using their full name, but whatever. It's also not going to stop people from using, you know, trying to enter like uh, something that's like null, but uh, hopefully we handle that by just like looking for the number of arguments, right? Um, just to be safe, I'm going to put this inside some quotes and let's take a look at what we get. Okay, it matched. Um, and it looks like everything went according to plan. So let's take a look at what the exit code for grep gave us. So once again, this matched. All the conditions match. Everything's fine. And it returns back a zero. OK? Keep that in mind. Let's go over here, and let's change this to something else. Let's just add a bunch of garbage into it. This time, we see no output. Let's take a look at what the exit code is. The exit code this time is 1. So grep is using ex exit codes in a way that we can really uh, take advantage of. Um, a positive match is 0. A negative match is 1. OK? So positive match is 0. Everything goes according to plan. Positive. Good. 0. And um, if this is not following, then we're going to get back a 1. OK, so keep that in mind. Now let's use what we know about grep uh, to modify our script. So we're going to go in here. Um, let's take out, let's take out uh, basically all of this for now. Uh, we're going to handle that later on. So let's leave the let's leave the um, logic checking. We'll just make sure that there is an argument coming in. And the next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to be echoing dollar sign one. We're going to be piping that into grep. And we're going to do the exact same thing as we did before. We're going to be allowing uppercase and lowercase letters, zero to many, and block it off there. And one thing that I want to do is um, I don't want any messages. I don't want any grep to actually print anything. OK? Um, I want to sort of keep that in the background. The only thing I care about right now is the exit code. So what I'm going to do is uh, you remember maybe dev null when we were using it uh, with uh, the find command. So all the standard output I'm sending to dev null, which means we're not going to see it. And the next thing I'm going to do is error messages, any error messages that might pop up, I'm going to send them to the same place as standard output. So that's what that's going to do, OK? So again, Standard output goes into a black hole, it goes into null, and it disappears. Standard error goes to the same place. Okay? One and two, both of those pipes are going into the garbage. Immediately after that, what I'm going to be doing is looking at the exit code of grep. Now remember, zero means that was positive, and anything that's not zero means negative. Either there wasn't a match or some other problem happened. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add another if statement. This time the one that I'm looking at is the exit code, right? And I'm going to say not equal to zero. 
Um, just so one thing about this. Um, number comparisons in Bash are using N, E, G, E, G, T. There's a whole list that you should be able to find online um, on my site. I've got them all. Um, but basically, so EQ is the same as equal, and this is the same as not equal to, okay? It's one little extra wrinkle in the whole bash world that you kind of have to be aware of. Okay, so if the exit code is not zero, then something has gone wrong. And we need to yell at the user so that they give us better uh, input next time. Um, That should be fine. Okay, so we have two sort of paths where things will break. So I'm gonna add another exit code over here and maybe I'll give it exit two. So if I'm ever looking at this, um, I can figure out what happened basically. And I'm gonna put fi over here and the last thing that I wanna do is finally just say hello to whoever. Okay, so let's see how that works. So once again, let's go test.sh. The first thing we'll test is no arguments. And it works. The next thing that we'll test is something that's successful. Okay. And that works. And now let's try something that is um, this. Okay, so that should about wrap it up. And just to take a look, you can exit, you can check my exit code from my script and just see that it's returning back a two. Okay, guys, that should uh, about wrap it up for this first uh, video on Bash. Uh, the stuff that we're going to talk about in the future has to do with loops. Um, we're going to talk a bit about, you know, math and stuff like that. Um, while loops and uh, some other ways that we can be using condition conditionals and operators and stuff like that uh, but this is probably enough for now so the big takeaway um, take it make sure that you take a look at the uh, summary uh, for all of the important information that's going to be relevant to quizzes and tests great thank you for now